Welcome to God Seeker. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. The current message January songs. No matter what the actual time of year, to you, it might seem like January. There are times in life like that which just seem like winter. There is a temptation to think that everything has died, that it's the end. And that's how winter looks, right? There has been spring with its blossoms of hope. The work of nurturing a summer's production and the happy rest, which comes when the goods of the season have been harvested. Then the sigh of relief at the sight of autumn's blissful decorations, where the touch of a breeze causes its bronzes, golds, and reds to dance on trees. There is a satisfying interior peace in autumn, which can even be exhilarating. And then, as if with a giant and unexpected exhale, autumn is done. Winter seizes control. A sense of death and endings can accompany it. A temptation to succumb to despair. Yet despite some time appearances, life is far from at an end. Here we are using observation of the known flow of Earth's cycle of seasons to comprehend something greater. Since God is unchanging, His way of doing and being and acting permeates all of His creation. Thus, one way He teaches us about His way is to give us pictures through His creation. By looking at creation and letting Him show us patterns, He teaches us what we can expect regarding how things will be. Of course, as you begin to let God do this, it is important to remember that when you think God has shown you something, you cannot assume that this particular insight is the only one possible. God is greater than that. The insights He can provide into Himself and His way through the same thing are multifaceted. And I hope that this fact causes a smile of happy anticipation. Yes, this God-seeking journey, where we are letting him uncover and impart the culture of his here-but-not-completely-yet kingdom, brings excitement and joy as layer by layer you discover him more and with it what life is really about and what's actually going on. So let's continue our look at one aspect of winter. What does it teach us about the nature of God and what we can expect from life? No season comes and remains. There is blue sky above every storm, and no storm lasts forever. Each season is a time to be passed through unto the next. No season, then, is the end. Each is part of a cycle, and this cycle is unto new beginnings and not endings. Contrary to winter representing the desolation of death, winter is actually the seedbed of new life. Consider it. When all appears dead and hopeless, beneath bark, branch, and soil, where we cannot see, there remains life. Good life. Growing life. Growth which is already setting in motion that which is needed for the coming spring. In fact, without winter, there can be no spring blooms and no harvest to come. The storms are required, for it is by the storms that the earth is watered, so that that which is to be grown has what it needs. And underneath, where we are mostly unaware in the midst of those storms, life not only continues, but there is flourishing, sheltered and unseen hidden from view. Let's look to apply this reflection, which has application beyond our literal seasons of winter, to include our emotional and spiritual winters as well. These are interior winters, where the potential to encounter hardship, which seems like it will never end, and hopelessness, which whispers all is lost, is similar to winter in nature. Interior winters can feel as dark, cold, and endless 
as any snowy northern winter landscape. However, it is there, with hopelessness pushing in and weariness growing, that you are called to trust in God. Trusting God is how he will sustain you through each winter until the new spring comes. It is important to keep in mind, however, that authentic trust in God is not a wishing trust that hopes blindly in what you have decided you want. Believing if you squeeze your eyes tightly shut enough, your wish will come true simply because you believed it would. Faith in God puts a different spin on trust. Believing God is there and choosing to rely on Him must be undergirded by the equally strong conviction that God has a plan for your life. You remember and rely upon the reality that He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. He is ever-present. He is also greater than His creation. He is over it. He is over us. He is the parent. We are the children. Parents naturally have a better understanding than the children. So it is with God in us. Therefore, though we may think we know what is coming or what we want, God sees all the pieces for all the people from here to eternity. He knows what is needed. He knows what the spiritual adversary will do or try to do to cause pain. He knows how he will comfort and what he will do in response. He truly has the overview, which is something we will never have completely. Therefore, in your winters, to choose to trust God is actually to place your confidence and hope in God and His will. At its core, this means that you hold your dreams with open hands. You release all the wishes to which you usually so tightly grasp to God and choose to trust him for his outcome. You may not see an answer in a day or in two. It may take a while. But in the meantime, as the child, you can go about your day without worry or fear, even as you continue to seek him. The truth is, and this is the truth upon which you place your trust, that God's plan, given his inherent superiority, and his eternal complete overview has to be better than yours. Now the difficulty is, God never promises everything will go the way you think you want. He also never promises that what you consider bad won't happen. In reality, the lives of those you love, as well as your own, will likely be impacted by evil. This current life will never be heaven. Jesus' life is the example which lays this truth bare. Take a look at his life as portrayed in the first four books of the New Testament, called the Gospels, written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus was born into poverty, was forced into exile, lived for years in obscurity, was persecuted, and then murdered. Jesus tells us to expect our lives to be similar. This may at first seem discouraging. To come to rest in God in light of this revelation can seem a challenge. Yet ever there is his invitation, his beckoning, for that unique combination of pouring out all your concerns to him during your winters, while simultaneously holding all your dreams with open hands before him. It is as you come to grips that this is how it has always been and will be, that there is consolation and eventual exhilaration in understanding God's purpose is greater than that towards which you might have been aiming. He wants to use you through all things in life to reveal himself to the world. It's about his kingdom come and his will being done on earth now as in heaven. Thus, when you find yourself in one of life's winters, 
God is not only working in often unseen ways to bring new life, as in spring for you, but for others as well, some of whom you will know and others you will not. There is hope in your winters. God is ever with you. Spring will come. In 2019 and 2020, the Holy Spirit led me to create a collection of January songs on the Even Now album. The lyrics to these songs set to music give you prayers with which you can go to God in song and fiercely cling to Him in your Januaries, in your winters. These are not songs insisting or begging for what you want, but declaring you trust Him for what He enables. Take a listen to the song even now. How does it make you feel? Listen again. What does it let you know about God? Are you called to make this song your prayer? You can find the song Even Now on my YouTube channel. Just search under my name, Elizabeth Fulgaro. It is also carried on some streaming services and is always available on CD. Let's conclude with one of my favorite Bible verses. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways know, recognize, and acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight and plain your paths. Thank you for joining in. This God Seeker message was brought to you by Eagle's Nest Foundation. Until next time, this is Elizabeth Fulgaro. I am praying for you. Listen to the song even now and keep seeking God.